Good afternoon, YouTube. Today I'm making this video in response to uh, Wet'suwet'en Nation's attack on all of Canada. Um, essentially, and this is also going to be a Wexit theme video. So, in the past, I felt a strong obligation to try to keep Canada intact. But it's gotten so bad now that I, I feel we must push much harder for separation um, and be serious about making that decision um, before we have anything, even a little bit of leverage to, to take in front of Ottawa and force them to meet our demands. So here is a constitutional way to do so. The Buffalo Declaration. In essence, it is the separation of Alberta and Saskatchewan um, laid down years and years ago as part of the Constitution uh, in the event that uh, Alberta, as, uh, as a, a solution to the inequity, um, and by extension Saskatchewan the same, so that they no longer have to be are no longer can the fate of our people be determined by a class of politicians bureaucrats lobbyists academics journalists or business leaders who have no real connection to our understanding of our land or culture so it's a constitutional way for the west to separate effectively now as many of you know i condemn jason kenny for not doing enough to actually get the the, the ball moving on separation because the way he's acting, it's like separation will will start talking about separation by the end of the next election, so to speak. He put it off in the future because he doesn't want to separate, really. What I'm saying is, we don't want to separate neither, but that option better be on the table to bargain with in case it has to come to that point. Because Trudeau is so radicalized and so ignorant to the problems with his own country, you know... It's, it's, he's so disconnected from reality. It's like a form of, of, of ignorance. Anyway, uh, this document lays down pretty much what we need to separate with Saskatchewan, uh, in the event of, of, um, a complete imbalance of power, let's call it. So autonomy that, uh, insults the West. So, in addition, um, I'm looking at this video that I found on Rebel News. Uh, so this is a uh, hereditary chief uh, talking to the press. So just observe. Long way, not only the distance that we travel, and we heard Prime Minister Trudeau just a little while ago talking about the inconvenience that Canada has, has suffered. However, there is a difference between inconvenience and injustice. Today, the Mohawk people and the Wet'suwet'en people stood in solidarity at the Mohawk Council House in Tiendanega to affirm that they will not stand by and watch while Wet'suwet'en title and rights over their lands are ignored and while human rights abuses continue to happen in the Wet'suwet'en territory. Contrary to the announcement by the BC RCMP on February 20th, 2020, that they are withdrawing from Wet'suwet'en territory. The hereditary chiefs of the Wet'suwet'en confirmed at the meeting that the BC RCMP and the CIRG have in fact increased harassment, made illegal arrests, increased surveillance, and monitoring of Wet'suwet'en people and their invited guests. This is completely unacceptable and far from the show of good faith and contradicts the an announcement by the BCRCMP. Both the Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs and the Mohawk people of Tiendanega remain deeply concerned by the myriad of laws that Canada has broken, including Wet'suwet'en law, the Canadian Constitution, the Supreme Court of Canada, Delgamuk decision of 1997, UNDRIP, and the Geneva Convention on Genocide. They want to remind Canada and the world that would Wet'suwet'en land was never ceded or surrendered, and as such, Canada's actions amount to an illegal occupation in Wet'suwet'en territory. They also want to remind the Canadian government that the rail line 
shutdown could have been ended many, many days ago if only Canada, BC, CGL, and the RCMP had honored their own laws as well as the respected Conservative laws. We demand the remote detachment community industry service office established by the RCMP on Wet'suwet'en territory without our consent be immediately removed and that the RCMP, RCMP are completely removed from our territory and cease patrols from our land. Out means out. We demand that all CGL activities cease within Wet'suwet'en territory while nation-to-nation -nation talks are going as present to the eviction notice that was delivered to them on January 4th, 2020. Um, one of the ongoing narratives of these protests is one that is anti-fossil fuels. It's an environmental argument, and yet when you look at the protesters, the blockades, they're using fossil fuels to keep warm, to fuel their vehicles. Is there not a degree of hypocrisy there? I don't want to get into any psychological attrition, so I can't comment on that. Okay, so I don't know if many of you have seen it, but essentially Dave Menzies was sort of attacked, or there was the threat of attack, when he went to confront the blockade, um, essentially with his cameraman and himself, or it might have even been by himself. So, in addition, uh, this gentleman here, Guy Simpson, I really enjoyed uh, that him and I think eight or nine other gentlemen uh, went out essentially to remove the blockade in front of a CN rail uh, crossing, let's call it. So, this gentleman and, 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 a, f and a few, a handful of other people... Um, essentially took the responsibility upon themselves to clear the track. Uh, so uh, here is uh, Sheila Gunn-Reed interviewing Guy Simpson. So uh, just observe. Hero. This is Guy Simpson. He is the guy who started it all. He started tearing down the blockade. Guy, what made you even go down there that day? Because it seems like, I've talked to a couple of the guys that were down there now, none of you really knew each other, but you all headed down there anyways. And that's exactly true. I uh, woke up in the morning, I seen the post that uh, they had set up a barricade, and I know that our government's doing absolutely nothing about this, the RCMP's doing nothing about this, local police are doing nothing, nobody's doing anything. I had to step in. I've been unemployed now for a while, I'm an oil field worker, Enough's enough. We need to get Canada moving again. Uh, I sense in your voice that you have an accent that you're not from here. Where are you from? And what brought you to Alberta so you could be a proud Albertan? I'm from Kingston, Ontario, and it's the oil field that brought me to Alberta. I've been out here now for 21 years, almost 22, and I'm loving it. I love this country. I love Alberta, and I believe the colors of our, our Canadian flag and Canadian oil. Now... What was it like down there? It seems like, well, you guys were pretty well behaved, but they were trying to bait you into a response because they knew the TV cameras were there. Oh, they most certainly were. I'm not going to lie to you. When I looked in some of their eyes, I seen blood in their eyes. And my biggest concern right now is that they don't actually want a peaceful resolution. I think that they are looking for something more. What do you think that is? Honestly, I think they want a war. I really do. It's sad for me to say, and I really hope that that's not the case, but so much of my gut is telling me that they do not want a peaceful resolution. Um, if they want a war, I don't think you guys are going to give it to them. Uh, I, I think they are outmatched in the testosterone department, um, and you guys didn't behave the way I think they anticipated you would. I think that they... Uh, underestimated you guys as a bunch of just out of control rednecks and they didn't get what they wanted out of you they most certainly did not and yes they most certainly were uh... Uh, I don't like the way Sheila is framing the question um, what you'll discover is a lot of these people are extremely extremely civilized people and I call them Canadian heroes from Alberta because 
Essentially, if they had attacked even a little bit, and that's that's a, a testament to the discipline All that they themselves department. have, then the crazy protesters uh, would have even had the cooperation of the police of the RCMP and gone after them, the the the, the oil guys here. Uh, essentially. One of them was attacked with a sign. He was hit in the neck by a protester. And he was just trying to, to put the sign on the back of the truck. So that protester violently attacked him and hit him in the neck. He went to the RCMP and the RCMP essentially ignored them. But if there was any retaliation by, by these gentlemen here against the, the Wet'suwet'en pr protesters, then the RCMP would have stepped in and arrested them. This is what the country is coming to. That's why his analysis of it going to war might actually be accurate. And one would argue that we're already under attack at this moment. So Trudeau has sponsored and allowed this thing to grow and grow beyond control. Essentially, we will begin surrendering territory back to these nations that... that essentially declare it. So my question is, what happens to Canada? Do we dissolve the, the, the country into, into uh, First Nations territory again? Do, do we hand over control, uh, uh, essentially sovereignty of our nation over, over to the First Nations people? I don't know. But like what, what uh, Guy Simpson said, I'm scared about the outcome that it's going to because that's what it looks like. We're heading to that point. It's it's we didn't want war. We've done everything we can for a peaceful solution. Trudeau, hate him or like him, nobody can deny that he's done more than any prime minister in history for the First Nations people since he took power. He's done nothing but give and give and give so much power authority to to first nations people for for all kind of things including in business this is why we have so much uncertainty in the market there's no a uh, self-respecting company with any brains whatsoever that'll look at the situation in canada and say the future is certain it's uncertain it's completely uncertain we cannot build business here because the situation is just too unstable so the fact that this chief can sit there and say, you know, get the RCMP off our land, get this. This group is the real warmongers in Canada. And the reason is they're prepared to go all the way to, to realize their goal, which will be destabilization of all of Canada, um, essentially cut off the life's blood from the CN rail they've done already, uh, kill any pipeline, any 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 potential oil and gas industry, uh, even if it's not even on their land. They they were occupying pu uh, public property and claiming it as their land. So, what Guy talked about is true. They want war. War is what they they they're aiming for. The destabilization and and it, breaking of the integrity of all of Canada. They'll keep growing. It's not a joke. It's already proven how many cities that they've attacked simultaneously through the so-called protesting movement. The RCMP does nothing to mitigate the crisis. Trudeau talk about to, to solve like this, to do that. Essentially, uh, no responsibility, no consequences. So you're looking at a situation where the country is being essentially held hostage by this group and the proper thing to do is for the RCMP to arrest them and put the the mob down because I'll tell you one thing uh, we've had problems in Alberta forever with them killing our industry but to let the country fall into this level of chaos in every province is a deliberate ignorant uh, ignorance of the responsibilities of governance and there should be a no confidence vote uh, held on the federal government for 
not only a lack of confidence within the Liberal Party itself, because that's what should happen, if they were good people, if there are good Liberal um, MPs there that, that can take responsibility away from Trudeau, they should make the initiatives to do so. And of course, the Conservatives, they just use it so that they can they can try to get in power. I don't care. Anybody is better than Trudeau. But essentially, to mitigate this crisis, the answer was uh, strong, patriotic individuals that were able to stand up and 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 essentially these guys, they're they're quite big guys actually. They're they're not they're not guys that are playing games, and they were the ones that were able to to get things done very peacefully, very civilized, even though they were they were being baited every second, and uh, you know. The solution they had is a, a beautiful one. It, it, it just look at how this, this this idiot protester here is trying trying to attack guy, and he just you know he he don't do anything. He just calm. Uh, I'm I'm clearing the blockade. That's it, you know. No anger, nothing. It it just completely objective, and he knows that because the cameras are all there, all the eyes are on it. They're they're itching to to see if he can make a mistake. Um, so. Essentially, true Canadians are being held hostage, and we are the ones that that, uh, because of the the political correctness and the radical uh, indigenous uh, bias that's going around. Because I don't say all indigenous; many of the indigenous are with us. They they want to see the pipeline go through, but one group. Because they keep being empowered and more empowered by Trudeau. It only took a matter of time before one group become radicalized enough to realize that a lot of power and authority reside within them. You talk about this, like if this would have happened in the States, Trump would have had them arrested. They'd be rotting in a prison right now. It, it, and not because of racism, but you can't have the country in a state of chaos like this where there's no authority, where there's no rule of law. How can you establish a country with that kind of nonsense? It, it can't exist. Canada itself will be lost unless order is restored. So I'm, 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 I applaud these gentlemen. And as far as I'm concerned, the way the chief is talking here, uh, there is no amount of charity that will ever be enough for the reconciliation of, of, of the, the First Nations with us unless we surrender Canada completely to them. That's what they want. So essentially the, the dissolution of Canada is what they're after. And they're going to get it if we don't do something. So my fellow Canadians wake up and see. It's wake up and see what's happening. You, you talk about political correctness. Forget about that now. In, in that shadow, the enemies of Canada essentially grew, took advantage of that weakness and built up their strength till they were strong enough to come in and and, and destroy us. I, I, I hate to talk in such a metaphorical term, but it's actually literal. We came in with the charity to reach out to make indigenous uh, um, reconciliation and so on. It was not reconciliation. There is no reconciliation that, that will satisfy them. I spoke with an elder. Um, she had no desire to see, like, no praise for any of the effort that was being made on their behalf. Uh, essentially, she said she suffered for a lifetime and no amount will ever uh, take the pain away, so on and so on and so forth. They are not going to be satisfied except with the dissolution of Canada and a return of the lands to the First Nations people. So never mind the reserves. They, they, they occupy the reserve. They want complete and full control. You know, some people will say that's their right. Yeah. But, you know, the protection of Canada itself really does circumvent that issue. And I'm tired of hearing people talk about like it's, it's a non-issue. Do you want Canada to remain intact or not? Do you have any love for this country, for this nation, what we built here? The idea that 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 brought us together in constitution, do you believe in that? Or do you think we should just surrender ourselves? If that's the case, 
surrender yourselves to the United States of America. That would be a lot smarter than, than, than surrendering to this radical group here. It's insane. I, I don't have the words for it. But what I do have the words for is back to this. This declaration here will allow Alberta and Saskatchewan to separate. Because I really do believe we're in a sinking ship right now. And unless the ship is rightened, we're dead. It, it's Canada is dead, essentially. It, it, it just We do our best with, with what we've got. But people don't want to admit how bad the situation is getting. And it can only get worse. Trudeau's got another three summer years left in, in, in... How much more does the country have to descend into chaos before people start acting? At least Guy Simpson and, 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 his, and the, the, the crew are able to try to, to take responsibility and do the right thing that the RCMP should be doing. It's, 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 it's absolutely pathetic that, that great Canadian people, just, just ordinary Canadians, you could say, they, they, these people, I'm sure they don't want any high praise. They're just ordinary working people that, that want their jobs and so on and do their thing and, and live their lives peacefully. And they still can't even conduct that small dream. It's, it's, it's hopeless. Separation is the key, and I, I say it with confidence. Um, there's no government that, uh, that I see, except for Maxime Bernier now, who actually could uh, have the principle to make the difference. And quite frankly, the time for him, it's, it's a long time coming. He, he needs a lot of time to develop the, uh, the People's Party of Canada, to rebuild it, to actually get some, some candidates elected. Uh, so, I mean, it's it's hopeless. It, Kenny cannot afford to be so weak. Because I tell you, Rachel Notley is biding her time. And she may get in power again if she pushes for separation as a platform. So, you heard it here first. Uh, there's We are in chaos right now in Canada. There's no excuse for that in, in a country that's supposed to be a modern nation. But we are in that position. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please uh, give a thumbs up and subscribe. So thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.